Hi, Kevin. Thank you so much for taking the time out for me and my audience today. So how are you doing today? I, as I said in the preamble, I am living the dream, my friend. I am grateful for the opportunity and uh, my goal is to add as much value as I can in the time given. Yeah, absolutely. And thanks for uh, coming to this show. I really appreciate it. But I know like uh, you have like a busy schedule, you're running your businesses and also you're doing your podcast show, which is like a one episode a day, so which is not <laughs> easy to do. So yeah, thanks for taking the time out. So I'm of super course. excited uh, learning more about you and your journey as well. So I can share with my audience. So before we get into like today's topic, which is we're going to discuss more about how to get out of your own comfort zone. So yeah, so people would love to know who is Kevin is and how you get into business and why you started the podcast. Yes, so it is a it is a fairly long involved story, the whole process, but I was 25 years old by mm. all outside standards. I was super successful. I had a high paying job, a beautiful girlfriend, a sports car, a new apartment, the body of my dreams. But inside yeah. I was I was pretty miserable, honestly. And I inv- I got invited to, to be on somebody else's podcast similar to this. And right. after that, I said to my friend, imagine if you could do that for a living. And he said, mm. you know, you can, right? And the next day I ordered all the equipment from Amazon. I had a mixer, I had a microphone. I didn't know what I was doing, but I figured it out. And my goal was to have important, deep conversations with people who wanted to have them with me. And that has evolved into a multi six figure business and yeah. 13 person team and speeches and 800 and 42 episodes. So that has all evolved, but the podcast started because I was curious about other people. And that's something I try to bring to every episode of our show. And that is the majority of who I am as a person. I'm a podcaster. Uh, I am, I have a fiance, so I have a a wonderful relationship. Um, But my goal is to level up in life, love, health, and wealth, and have a holistic approach to to mm-hmm. success and redefine what success is for me and and hopefully help other people realize what it is for them. Yeah, wonderful. And that's like an amazing journey like you had, guys. Uh, just over five years ago and doing your podcast, right? Yep. Yeah. 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 And a lot of people like age of 25, like they don't know like uh, what to go, which path to go and what the calling is, but right? they don't know their gift is. Yeah. Uh, for you, like if, uh, finding your own, gift and age of 25 is incredible so what made you the shift uh to get into like a podcast and get into starting your own business even though you mentioned like he was earning six figures that time and financially wise he was like a stable and like uh, you're living your dream like you got a dream car and everything but what made you realize like no this is not something i want to do with my life i need to make it to make a difference to other people how the calling came through yeah so the job that afforded me a great lifestyle started to take away from the podcast. It's mm-hmm. as you know, it's very hard to podcast while yeah. you're traveling. And my job, I was a foreman for a weatherization company. So just think construction. Yeah. And I was always on the road. So out of the 12 months, I was on the road for 10 months. Wow. And that thing that brought me so much money and brought me success also was taking away from my passion. So mm. it actually got to the point where I started calling out of work. I showed up late. I left the job early and it got to the point where I was sitting on the edge of a hotel bed and I was debating suicide. I wanted to take my own life because I felt so stuck. I felt so trapped. I felt like there's no way I could ever leave this job. I felt like I couldn't leave a job that was paying me a hundred and something dollars an hour. How am I going to, how am I going to leave that that job? Yeah. And it was really in that moment where it was like, you know what, I, if I want to have the impact I want to have, I have to go all in on this. And then I left my job a couple Mm -hmm. months later, didn't make any money for the first two years of this journey, which was brutal, but I was doing what I loved. And that's the message I try to send is I know it sounds, it probably sounds like a movie, but I'm, I was way happier being broke, doing something I loved than Mm. being wealthy, doing something I didn't. And that's, that's an important lesson that I think a lot of people find out the hard way. Like I did, hopefully I can shed some light on that and people can save some time and pain. I totally agree on that. Like uh, finding your passion is rather than doing something like uh, Mm -hmm. for a million dollars. And, and I can totally agree with it because uh, I had like a similar situation. I had like a take queer business with my brother. Uh, that was in back in 2014-15 time 
And I wasn't enjoying it at all. It doesn't matter like how much money we are making from it. And the business was a really good first uh, couple of years. It was really, really amazing. But after that, I start with me, like I wasn't enjoying the process. I wasn't enjoying that going to the work. I wasn't getting excited like compared to right now. Like I was looking forward to all day, like my podcast recording, my business, which we do like RC Digital Media Marketing Company. I'm pumped up. I wake up at seven in the morning to get uh, started with my day and I love being like, what I do. So yeah, I totally agree with that. It's not about the money. It's about the, who you are. And my mm-hmm. wife oftentimes asks like, when I'm going to be retired and everything, like what age I prefer. I was like, the day I'm going to take my last breath, uh, then I'll be retired from my work mm-hmm. and job because I don't consider it as a job anymore or like a, I'm working for someone or something. It's just my passion and my life is along with that. Without the, like I had like a two weeks off because of the holiday season right now and after like a four or five days I was just overwhelmed my wife just asked like what's wrong with you I was like nothing I don't know what to do because I, I, I never had it like over a year now I never had a break so and I don't know what to do like uh, there is no podcast recording there is no talking to new people and I'm enjoying the time and moment with my little boy and everything, but same time, like something is missing from me. So mm-hmm. after like a one week, I was like uh, working like two, three hours. I was supposed to take two weeks off. I only took like uh, four or five days, then I'm back on the work. <laughs> so it, it, it's just a, one of the things, and I totally agree with that. So you went for like an uncertain path um, without like um, making enough money for the first two years. How, how did you get into like an uncertain path and what gives you the courage to go and pursue your goal. So I always want to give credit. My business partner is, you know, he has an MBA. He went to school for Mm -hmm. marketing. He went to, he's a very, very smart human being. So I'm very grateful to have somebody in my corner who for a lot of the time instilled belief in me. I, I never planned on being a speaker. And at this Mm -hmm. point we've been paid thousands of dollars to speak. I never knew that was going to happen. So I have had somebody in my corner who has been there to support me every step of the way. What I will say is this. I believe that we all have some sort of superpower, whatever it is, it depends on the person, but my superpower is showing up regardless Mm. of how I feel, regardless of how scared I am. I just show up. And that's what you and I were talking about when we first chatted about getting outside of your comfort zone. The reason I have gotten to where I am is because even when I was uncertain, I kept Mm. searching and going deeper into uncertainty. And there's a good way to think about it. So if you think of a bullseye in the center of center of the bullseye is your comfort zone. The next ring out is your learning zone. And Mm -hmm. then the the third and final ring out is your anxiety zone. You want to be living somewhere in between comfort and anxiety. You want to be in learning. Yeah. And I think for me, most of my life, I went from comfort to anxiety to comfort to anxiety. And for the last five years, I have been in learning for sure, right on the outside of anxiety. And I think that's why I've had so much growth in the last five years, but it's also been the hardest thing I've ever done in my entire life. So I think that's an important distinction. Yeah. And you had the consistency, like showing up every single day. Mm -hmm. So that's not like a normal things to do. Like uh, when you change your career or like start something like you don't see any kind of growth there and being consistent onto it like without seeing any kind of results it's not easy things to do like I couldn't stay consistent when I started my career it was like uh, oh I'm not getting any results my first year and when I started my online marketing so one day I'm doing like 100% of my effort someday like 20% of my effort so yeah like you mentioned like that's like something unique power you have which is like being consistent without seeing the results and keep moving forward with it and also also you mentioned uh which is like uh you already built up uh with your six-figure salary uh job when you had the job that kind of uh expenses you already had so probably Mm -hmm. you spending the amount of you making is spending on the same amount of living cost and same time like when you go back to like a zero or like a little money to compare to to that it's it's like a hard hard and scary things isn't it Mm -hmm. like it's going for like a completely out of comfort zone like you're probably spending like a two thousand dollars on your pocket expense per month giving an example and right now you have to only spend two hundred dollars per month which is like a dramatically as a drop so how did you overcome that kind of mentality and the spending behavior when you made the shift yeah so i i think my bills were probably i had a 420 dollar car payment my apartment was 1500 
yeah. I was probably spending close to $3,000 a month right. on expenses. And yeah. I, I changed my environment. So when I decided I was going to leave my job, mm-hmm. I moved in with a buddy of mine. Right. I moved in with a good friend of mine. I rented a room from him. He's an entrepreneur as well. It's very similar to the stories you hear of startups yeah. where they all live in the same apartment and they pay a yeah. hundred bucks a person or whatever it is. So I moved in with him. My rent went from $1,500 a month to $500 a month. Mm. Luckily, my car payment ended up ending and I owned my car. Okay. And, and then it was very much, okay, how much of the flashy yeah. things that I thought I needed do I really need? Okay. I don't need this. I don't need that. The cable bill is split in half. Wi-Fi split in Mm. half. Gym memberships, 10 bucks. Groceries. I can eat not so nice things. Make sure I don't eat out as much. So for me, it was really slashing the things that I didn't need. Yeah. And I understand that's very difficult because you look on social media and everybody has, they're out to dinner and they have a new watch and they have a new whatever, but you have to understand for all of this, you mm. are playing the long game. Yeah. And many people aren't playing the long game. That's why they have short results, but those results don't last. And you have to set yourself up with a foundation yeah. for the long game. And that's that was my goal. And now we're at the point now where we're more financially free, mm. but I still have a lot of those habits of I don't need to, I don't have a watch. Yeah. I don't I have I have two watches and I think they're, I don't know, 50 bucks a piece or something. And that when you're broke or when you're trying to save money or when you're scarce, you yeah. form habits that will help you when you're not broke, when you're abundant, you have the habits to maintain that wealth, that abundance. And I think being broke is good. As long as yeah. you, as long as you come from it and you use that necessity to change your behavior. Yeah. It teaches you like a valuable lessons. Mm-hmm. And, and I experienced the same way. Like I remember when I first moved to UK, when I was like 16 years old, I used to get about 10 pound, per week uh, to live off my brother. Uh, I was earning like a hundred pound a week and mm. used to give me like a 10 pound in a week to live off with that. So with 10 pound a week, I pay for like a pay as you go mobile phone. That's a five pound a month. Mm. I'm buying a toothpaste, a shampoos, whatever things I need, even the clothes and also like a bus fare, also I'm eating it. And some people will be surprised like how much you can do with the 10 pound. But when you broke, it teaches you a lesson and you, you manage uh, the money as some different way and you can find a way to work it out even the small amount of money. And right mm. now uh, that habit in my business, I implement it right now. And when I think about it, I can find a different way to, instead of spending $10,000 on certain software or something, we can do a thousand dollars because we know how to manage the money. And so certain people can't do that. It's, it's like a valuable lesson where it comes from. So I have like another follow-up question, which will be regards to, when you made the change from your uh, habits and everything, when you minimized everything, how did you deal with the, like a judgment of others? So obviously mm-hmm. you had a friend circle of your family members because coming from like a six figure to going back to like not flashing anything, like uh, you're living in a simple life. How did you maintain that? Because most of the case people don't want to do so, uh, something like that because what other people are going to think about me? They're going to think I'm a failure. They're going to think about, I, I couldn't do anything with my life. That's why I'm going back to how I started. So how yeah. did you have the mental shiftness? I think one of the most important things was I had extra Y power. Mm. It was it was one of those, those processes for me of when you start getting messages from people, when people, and I, I'm sure you've gotten these, Hey, your yeah. podcast changed my life. Hey, your podcast is the thing I listen to every day. Yeah. The outside noise is not as loud because if you're saying, Hey, you know, how many times have you heard? You're not going to make any money with your podcast. Yeah. Everybody yeah. said that everybody, you're not going to make any money. You're not going to make any money. Nobody makes money. And it was one of those things of uh, number one, I'm not focused on that. I'm focused on the impact. Mm-hmm. And I believe if I impact enough people, the money will come Yeah. because the person who adds the most value collects on the back end. That's just the way it works. Yeah. And I think it's the why power though, the why power to realize, look, if there was a podcast like this that I was listening to, maybe I never would have got to the point where I was sitting on the edge of the bed debating suicide. Mm. Maybe I never would have got to the point where I thought I had to make all this money to be very happy. Maybe I never would have got to the point where, you know, I wrecked a lot of my relationships. So the understanding that I think I tried to adopt was 
if people don't understand you as a human being, they won't understand what you're doing and everything's going to look weird. And that's okay. That's yeah. okay. And then the part two of this, I have empathy for the fact that a lot of people see what I'm doing mm. and they see that I have my own schedule and I'm my own boss and they might be frustrated or they might be jealous or envious because I know I was, yeah. I know I would have been back in the day. So I think it's that part two of having empathy of, Maybe they don't lack the belief that you can accomplish it. Maybe they're frustrated that they're not doing what they want to do. And you're a flashlight yeah. to that dark spot. And I know that's, it can be heavy and it can be hardcore, but I do believe it is that way for a lot of people. And I was there. I know I felt that before. Yeah, absolutely. I agree on that. And most of the ties, like there is the jealousy is, is everywhere. And most, most of like inner circle. So the people we most hang around with, the people we yeah. share everything with, and they get the most jealous uh, things we've come across with. Like I, I, I've been through that as well. And obviously you mentioned that on your own experiences because they think like a, you are better than them and mm. they don't com compete with you. Then they come from like a certain things. So they always looking for a certain something to point out to you. If, if you make yeah. a, any kind of like, a, you just realize like why I need a, uh, hundred thousand dollars worth of car by now my twenty thousand dollar car is because i serve the same purpose of i'm doing probably mm -hmm. when you're 20s early 20s you probably didn't realize like everyone buying a ferrari everyone buying a lamborghini yeah. i have to do that but when you're actually driving you realize this is not a comfortable car what i wanted i'm happy with the like suv and that's like only sixty thousand yeah. dollars but when people are gonna see it, like from ferrari to you going back to suv like a range rover or land rover or something and they're going to think, oh, look at him, like he tried to show off and everything. Now he's gone back to like where he started, gone back to like backwards instead of going forward. But in this case, it's not actually true. You're going doing it for like yourself. Now you're getting more mature enough and you realize mm -hmm. what's the point of me having a Ferrari where I'm not enjoying it myself. Yeah. And that car is not comfortable for me for day to day drive. So I'd rather do the SUV because I'm a family man. I have a kid. I have a girlfriend. Uh, we love to go long trip. So it's about you, like how you uh, yeah. feel comfortable with. Can I add one thing? To yeah, that? yeah, yeah. For, so first of all, I love cars and my my dream car is Mercedes AMG GTR. So I have nothing against fancy fast yeah, cars. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> I do intend on having them. But this is the thing that I think people forget. A lot of the relationships we have Mm. are based on who we used to be yeah. and who we currently are, not who we aspire to be. Yeah. So if you're watching this, if you're listening to this, ask yourself this question. Are the people in my life the best from my past or the best for my future? Mm. That is something that I've always been pretty good at uh, is separating myself from people who are not helping. Yeah. You have to understand that I don't believe people are afraid to lose love I believe people are afraid to lose people, regardless of the space that they hold in their life. So ask yourself, am I willing to trade my success, my fulfillment, my aspirations, and my dream life for the relationships that are holding me back? If the answer is no, it's time to reallocate time. You mm. will regret not ending relationships that are holding you back from the best version of yourself. You will, because yeah. I have. I have. I think everybody has. Yeah, absolutely. I totally agree with that. So when did you have like your suicidal thoughts uh, you coming through and you didn't feel like uh, move ahead with your life and try to give up with your life? What made you come out of the kind of situation? Obviously, you mentioned you started podcasting everything, but is there any kind of like support you needed to take from like a coaches or consultant or like uh, your uh, partner or like your family members? Yeah. So the person I messaged was my business partner. I messaged Alan okay. and he basically said, Kev, so much has changed in your life over the mm. past few years, but your environments haven't, you're still right. doing the same thing. You haven't, you haven't changed what you want to change yet. I think it's time for a change. And that kind of woke me up. Yeah. And at that point I had already been going to therapy. I had been going to therapy on and off for probably a year. So right. I always, I always advise, look, there's professionals that it's their job and their expertise to help you when you're struggling. And mm -hmm. I don't think it makes you weak. I think it makes you stronger admitting the, the problems that you're dealing with. So it was, it was my reference group, yeah. my very small, I have a very small circle of people in my life who I trust and I really, really admire. And then it was professionals. That's, that's where I leaned into.
Yeah, thank you for sharing that. Like of a course. lot of people doesn't want to like admit that, uh, and they, especially with the men, they don't share their feelings, right? Mm. We don't often cry like how women cries, and they share the feelings with their friends or family member, or even the goal for a therapist. Like uh, most of the uh, life coaches and consultants, their client base is like a woman compared to guys. And I often see that, and there is more suicidal from men compared to women. The reason being is like they don't share the feelings with someone and they feel like if I share it with you, I'm feeling gonna feel weak. But yeah. with your case, obviously sharing and everything makes you stronger and made you like who you are today. And this is why we are interviewing you. Same with me, like I didn't have to go on a therapist or anything. Uh, I lost both of my parents age of 13. And one person was behind me, which is my elder sister. She's my second elder sister. And I share with her every day. And even though till now, certain things is bothering me and everything, I feel like upset and down. I'm sharing with her. Now I'm sharing with my spouse, my wife. So they both like are supporting me in a way, like if wherever the situation is there and I can't deal with myself, I'm sharing with them. This is certain things or not. Otherwise, I would be suicidal too because I lost both of my parents. I'm living on my own, age of 13, 14. I have no clue. The reason it's kept me going is like a day, my sister showed me like, uh, keep moving forward with your life. And that day will come like you won't regret it anymore. And mm -hmm. instead of focusing in the past, focus on the future and present moment where you have and why you can do better with your life. So then certain things like make people stronger. So those times like you've been making a transition starting your podcast and uh, first two years when you and your partner struggling to make a living like a, the desire a life you wanted what was mm -hmm. like a mindset there like did you guys see the vision or focus on the vision or like a, every day is like a, being upset or not achieving your goal and how, how was the moment like I was I was struggling really bad because I didn't I didn't have the belief that mm. I knew you could make money with a podcast, but I didn't have the belief in the understanding and the business sense and the marketing sense. And I didn't understand sales and I didn't understand margins. I didn't understand anything about business because I had never studied it. Yeah. So it was very much our main focus from the very beginning of this is how do we build our character first mm -hmm. and then use that character to build a community and then worry about the system. And then we have like systems. We have all the systems. We have the spreadsheets. We have all that yeah. stuff now. But in the beginning, it was, I want to make sure that as a man, as a human being, I have a very high character. Mm. And I really poured into myself, you know, for the last year, probably two years at this point, I've learned something for 45 minutes every single day. I haven't missed. I don't miss my learning because I realized that the more valuable I become, the more I can help. Yeah. And the more valuable the company becomes. So early on, it was very much focused on what are my blind spots? What are my weaknesses? How do I mitigate them? Mm -hmm. And then what, when I climb to that next level, what can I see? Okay, yeah. I can see that now I can start charging for clients. Awesome. Okay, cool. What's the next thing? Well, the next thing is I can start speaking. Okay, awesome. Let me get better at that. Okay, now yeah. I have a podcast production company. I have to understand margins and I have to understand leadership and I have to understand content. So every time you get better at something, it's time to challenge yourself with something new. And then you'll get better and you can challenge yourself better and challenge yourself. In the very beginning, it was about learning and building yeah. character. And that was the name of the game. It was really, it was really that. And to speak to something you said earlier, understanding and building consistency. Yeah. That was something that we did early on. We started with one episode, we went mm. to two, we went to three, we went to four, we went to five, we went to six, we went to seven. We started with one to be consistent and then we built that habit over time. So that was very important in the beginning. Yeah, and just over 800 episodes, it's not easy things to do. Like most no. people give up after like a 50 or 60 episode and they see like they're not making any money or something. It's just like mm -hmm. uh, call it, be, <laughs> you know, yeah. like staying consistent with it and giving you 100%. It's just a great things to do. So obviously you mentioned your partner who had the vision about mm -hmm. our company and that's where you kept you going during the tough times. And after that, is seeing the result. So same with the, like, a, it's just like a, being a gym partner, isn't it? Like mm -hmm. going to the gym, like you hire a trainer or sometimes it's your best friend. Uh, they like a, your 
um, bodybuilding uh, partner. So even though it don't feel like a, it don't feel uh, you feel like a give, giving up, and they push you towards it, like if they keep moving forward, uh, five more reps and <laughs> and carry on yep. at 10, 10 minutes uh, uh, running on the treadmill. So yeah, how important is it, like having a running mate like this, like as your partner, and how can someone can find someone? like uh, your partner so they can achieve more with their life it is so important it is so important we were saying this we just started our fifth round of group coaching last night we said mm. this in the first call you all will be better in a group because you don't want to let each other down right you know i'm showing up to the gym at five in the morning you're not going to not show up because you're going to feel bad you're going to feel worse about letting me down than you're going to feel about missing the workout for yourself so mm. it has been the most important thing in terms of the business, because it's been a mirror. Yeah, I've been able to be a mirror for him and he's been a mirror for me of, hey, you're missing this. Like you are completely missing that this is a human behavior you do not understand. Mm. And he's said that about business. Like, Kev, you have to understand it works like this, not like this. How do you find it? It depends, it depends on the person. But this is what I would say. You have to figure out what your unique strengths are. Yeah, And you have to find a way to show that to somebody who values it. Alan is very analytical, mm. math brained, engineer, electrical engineer, computer engineer, very math brained. Yeah. And I helped him understand how human beings, particularly emotionally driven human beings, think and they act and what they believe. Mm. Alan has helped me with numbers, business, all of that. So I found my strengths, I leaned yeah. into them. And I found somebody who had strengths that I didn't that could mitigate my weaknesses. And I leaned into them. We call it the drive to five. In the uh, beginning, I was super insecure. I was a zero. I was super insecure. And Alan was supremely confident. He was a 10. We drove each other to five where you're confident, but you're humble. You realize you know a lot, but you don't know everything. Yeah. You know you need people in your corner. So I think it's about finding a business partner who is character first. That, that's what I would say. Focus mm -hmm. on character, character first, and then figure out what are their unique strengths? How do they mirror mine? What are their unique weaknesses? And how do I shore those up? But I think the, the reason business relationships don't work is because character and ego. Yeah. And those are the two reasons why. It's not because people don't know enough. It's because they, they don't know how to be vulnerable. They don't know how to say, hey, you're right. I was wrong. That's my bad. Mm -hmm. Take ownership and have that level of humility that I realize that I would rather be a number two yeah. in a very successful business than a number one in a decent business. I, maybe I'm not a number one. That's okay. Mm. It's okay. But that takes a level of humility that I've been practicing over the years that if you have a business partner, you have to, you have to be very humble with. Yeah. But in like a general cases, is most of the time, like people partnership doesn't really work out the reason is everyone wants to be number one on the company mm -hmm. and everyone thinks like i know better than you all, all the time even yeah. though you seem like what happened on a steve jobs company he's mm -hmm. been kicked out from his company and that guy thought like he knew it's, it's most of the time like a fortune 500 companies all the time happens fighting each other because of like who wants to be a ceo wants to be vice chairman and things like that so let's say about the startups obviously you guys are small to medium-sized businesses even though i was a small to medium-sized businesses so those who are starting a startup with their partner how they can be like a number one or number two how to define that and have mm -hmm. like a balance at the same time and not have like a bad relationship out of it and making the company bankrupt yeah i believe you have to understand that you have to have the same core beliefs mm -hmm. the same core goals and the same core values, yeah. the same beliefs are, um, we're going to be authentic and transparent. It's not our goal to sell anything. It's our goal to add value that people want to buy. Mm. If you think of that way, like that, that company thought yeah. is going to say like, we're never going to short sell somebody. We're never going to back end sell somebody. We're never going to pressure sell somebody. And if that ever happens, we're going to have to have a conversation because we're out of alignment. Mm. I believe that's what it is. It's what is aligned for you what is aligned for me? And when things start to go out of alignment, when my ego starts to flare, when I get insecure, yeah. how do we have an open and honest conversation? One of the things that has made us successful 
is the fact that we're both humble enough to admit that we're wrong, but we're mm-hmm. also supportive enough to let somebody else be wrong. Yeah. Sometimes I'm wrong. I just am sometimes. I just am. And sometimes Alan's wrong. And that's okay. That's okay. We take that information. Yeah. And then we realize, okay, you're better at that arena. We're going to leave you here. Mm. For instance, 840 episodes. I have named every single one of our episodes. Alan has never named an episode ever. I've named all of them. Alan built all of the spreadsheets. He built all of the prospecting sheets. He built all of that. He built the entire dashboard. I didn't have anything to do with that. So I'm better when it comes to money in terms of making it because it's a, it's a priority for me. Alan is so long-term he doesn't care about now. He doesn't care about being broke. It doesn't bother him at all. So that's my strength. That's a potential Mm. weakness for the business. How do we shore that up? But it goes back to not having ego. Alan is smarter than I am. It's okay. He is. Yeah. He went to one of the, he went to WPI. He went to one of the best schools in the world. I, I, I respect you for that, for well, saying I, I that, honestly. That. Yeah, you I know, appreciate that. Most but, people will be like, I'm the number one. <laughs> I know, but, yeah. and, and that's how I started. Yeah. I started that way and I wanted to be the number one. And yeah. I, it's a, it's doing, it's doing myself, Alan, the team and our community and the world a disservice if I try to convince myself that that's where I'm supposed to be. It's mm. okay. It's okay to be a number two in a really good thing. It really yeah. is. And you have to understand that going in. I think if you eliminate ego, a lot of things get solved. They yeah. just do. End of the day, it's about the happiness, isn't it? And yeah. The happiness about like uh, every day you're going to see your partner, every day you're going to see your team member, every day you're going to do the same thing. Why make the conflict where everyone's going to be unhappy, even though including mm-hmm. yourself? So having a compromisation and also like... Uh, building a culture inside your team that where is everyone happy they're enjoying yourself you probably earn less money or something the end of the day is like you're happy the most important thing and yeah. you're doing what you actually love doing so yeah. we need to focus on that rather than like being number one or like what he said or she said and everything making get chaos chaos and that, that's not a right culture to have in a company yeah and one of our things is fail forward yeah like we when we do our live events, we have a a competition to see who can get rejected the most. Mm. If you're trying to sell tickets and you you know you sell 50 tickets, awesome, I love that. If you try to sell tickets and you get rejected 150 times, we have a prize for that because right. I don't I don't want it to be a negative when something goes wrong. It is it a negative when something goes wrong? Yes, if you don't learn from it, and yes, if the same mm. mistake happens over and over and over and you don't improve, but if we can get rid of this idea that a mistake is a failure, that's not true. A mistake gives you opportunities to learn from feedback that you didn't have before. So yeah. that's, that's part of our, our culture too, is fail forward, get out there and make the mistake. I'd rather you take the shot and miss mm-hmm. than hold on to the ball. It's, it's okay. I make mistakes all the time. I've misspoken. I'm sure several times I said like, or um, that I didn't want to say, but I'll, I'll review this and I'll get better and then I'll try not to do it next time. And I just think that's a wonderful lesson for life, leadership, culture, business, everything, relationships. Yeah. And so let's get to getting out of comfort zone again. Uh, that'll be like for our audience. So how, is there any path or steps need to be followed getting out of the comfort zone? Probably like a, someone giving for example, they're 35 years old, they have like a two children, and he's a married guy and wants to quit his job, six-figure salary, and get into whatever startup or business he wants to create. But financially, it will be like really difficult because it's no case of like how you was, like you're not uh, 25 years old and you were mm-hmm. single that time, like you didn't have any kind of uh, expense, like you need to take care of someone or something. But when the case of like someone 35 years old have like a family of four, they need to take care of a, a lot of education, healthcare, and everything else. How they can take the leap in towards their goal or like their vision? Yeah, I think it's different at that stage of your life. I believe yeah. getting outside of your comfort zone looks like working more. Mm. And what I mean by that is when I was 25, I left my job, or was, I was 26, I think, when I actually left or 27. But 
I left my job and went and did this full time. Awesome. Right. When you're 35 and you have a house and a mortgage and two car payments and children, it means you go do your eight hours or your nine hours at your job. Yeah. And then when you get home and you seek comfort in the couch in whatever it is, right? I, I yeah. like Netflix every once in a while. So that's all <laughs> good. That's when you have to get outside of the comfort zone and say, you know what? I have to research this thing I'm doing. So mm. maybe you want to get into real estate. All right, cool. I'm sick of working at the office job. I want to start my own real estate thing. Awesome. After you do the thing that pays your bills, you yeah. do the thing that you want to pay your bills. And it's going to be difficult. You're going to be tired. You're going to be overwhelmed. You're going to be outside of your comfort zone, but you have to take the small steps. I think that I think that we make it seem like it's this giant mountain when it's not. It's yeah. It's one step at a time. It's one step at a time. So if you're later in life, I believe that you have to multitask. You have yeah. to multi-career. I don't think for most people it's feasible to leave and go all in. And that's okay. That's yeah. reckless. What I did was reckless. So don't do that, please. Because I've, I've dealt with a lot of pain because of that. And it's been very difficult. <laughs> I think that you first have to determine where your comfort zone is. Mm. And I don't think most people realize that we're kind of going through life and we fit into our comfort zones. The things that you say no to yeah. are probably things that scare you. Sometimes that's good but sometimes that's an opportunity for growth. Yeah. If you're later in life, do your thing that pays the bills and then double down and learn and master and practice and research the thing that you want to pay your bills. Hmm. And then, then you start small, you get one client and yeah. that's going to be a stretch and it's going to suck. And you're going to have to respond to messages at 9 PM and it's going to be a pain in the butt, but okay. That client replaces some of your income. You get another client. And yeah. that replaces more of your income. And then when you hit that 50, 50 mark, you start to, you start to look at things a little bit differently, but I don't think there's any easy way. I don't know that there's any step-by-step. -step. I think it's personal to each person because everybody's comfort zone is, is a different place and it looks different and it has yeah. different things in it. So depends on where you are, but you know, when you're not doing what it takes, you know, mm. when you're, when you're falling back into comfort and that's good sometimes for sure, yeah. but not if Let's put it this way. If your job is your anxiety zone, yeah. then when you go home, you have to land in the learning zone. You can't go to the comfort zone, the learning mm -hmm. zone of the thing that you want to lean into real estate, coaching, podcasting, speaking, whatever it may be. Yeah. I think that's probably the best way to put it. Yeah, I totally agree on that. And also in the same way, Rather than taking a hundred percent leap to someone, you rather test it out uh, mm -hmm. different things because you, you don't really know like the real estate thing is for you or not. Probably right. you think one of your friends doing it well and you're thinking he seems happy. Why don't I try it? But that's not probably your gift. You know, like the same example with yours, like your gift is like doing podcasting and having a relationship with a human. And obviously if you want to be an accountant and you say like a, this is my passion because I see one of my friends is doing great with accounting and million, making yeah. millions of dollars a year. That's not going to be your happiness, right? So same way, like rather than taking the full leap, if you have like a six figure job or whatever job is you have, try for like a six month certain mm -hmm. project, the things you have in your mind and see like how it turns out. Even though without you making any money, do you really enjoy doing the task you need to do the process you're enjoying or not the money will f flow like after like giving it some time probably three years some, some of the five years it depends every dream is different and mm -hmm. some of them is like a pre-proven like a, let's say about podcasting many people have already done it many mm -hmm. people are already making money from it so there is a shortcut to it you learn from other people but certain things you want to go mars or you want to go some different space out of the world and yeah. no one done it before that could be not going to be like three to five years could yeah. be 10 to 20 years probably lifetime and never able to make it so certain dream or vision you have like it could be different than each other and also where you're standing how much saving you have how much responsibility you have and yeah, again can you work eight 12 hours a day can you work 14 hours a day or like uh, you are the person like only have the capacity of working four hours a day so everyone got a different strength level yeah. as well. So you have to identify yeah. who you are, where you want to be and do small things at a time. Right. Mm -hmm. And what is your, what is your capacity for risk? Yeah. That's an important thing too, of 
if you're somebody who requires a lot of certainty, yeah. you're going to want to play the game differently because when you're an entrepreneur, there's very little certainty, especially, mm. especially in the beginning. So understand what's your risk tolerance. It's okay. It's okay to go slower than somebody else. Yeah. It just, I would rather you go slower and sustain it than go fast and burn. And that's, that's mm. okay. You got to get okay with doing, doing it the right way for you. Yeah, I totally agree on that. And some people are not built to be an entrepreneur, right? And that's True. totally fine. Mm -hmm. Like you can work on a, any kind of company and build yourself inside the company. And you can be like a CEO of the company or greatest and you can make millions out of it anyway. It or some people want certainty, like how much I'm going to make end of the month, end of the year, my yearly contract. But in business, you don't get that. Some mm -mm. month you 10 grand, some month you 50 grand, some month zero, you know, and not many people can cope with that. <laughs> so yeah. it's totally fine. Like if you're not built for being an entrepreneur, find your passion, what kind of job you love to do and get a different job. If you're hating your job every single day yeah. and find your own passion, even though your salary is less than your 50% earning, but you'll be happier and doing something more than burning out yourself for like six figure or multiple six figure job. Mm. Yeah. Totally agree. So yeah, Kevin, so we are running out of time for this podcast and yeah, it's been great to learn from you as well. And also sharing your thoughts on getting out of comfort zone and your story. I really, really love that. So those who's listening, if they want to listen to your podcast, what's your podcast called, how they can find it? And also, do you have any social media if anyone wants to reach out? Sure. Yeah. So if you like what we talked about today, Next Level University is our podcast. You can find it on any of the podcast platforms or on YouTube or we are everywhere. Our website is nextleveluniverse.com. Mm -hmm. And if you just search Kevin Palmieri, you get me on Facebook, LinkedIn. I am at Never Quit Kid on <laughs> Instagram. So if you want to follow yeah. me, feel free. And I will gladly send you a video saying thank you. Yeah, thank you so much for that sharing for Kevin. So I really appreciate you for your time, for taking the time out and yeah, and sharing the valuable lesson to your audience. I really appreciate it. So I wish you have a great new year. So the whole year ahead, I hope there is no more lockdown or any more <laughs> another uncertain things uh, comes like last year. So hope you achieve your goals and continue to grow your podcast. I wish you and your partner very good luck with that. Thank you, my friend. This was wonderful. I appreciate you. Thank you for the curiosity and the questions. Grateful for the opportunity. You're most welcome. I really appreciate it. So that's a wrap, guys. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. You know how to find Kevin and how to find their podcast. So go check out their podcast and find Kevin. If you want to work with Kevin or learn more about him, reach out to his social media platform. So till then, stay safe, stay healthy. I'll talk to you next episode. Take care, everyone.